Sam's Club is a chain of membership-only retail warehouse clubs that started in 1983. Thank you for your suggestion. When I come in here to Sam's Club, I'm on a mission. I don't have time to waste, and you got to get in here and you got to get back to work. A any small business can come in here and fill all their needs. How's business? Hey, it's great. I always find myself telling people about deals I find at Sam's Club. Here's your membership card. Great. <laughs> Go get them. You betcha. There's a lot of lot of things you can buy at great prices. Boy, my customers are gonna love these. Morning. Breakfast. <laughs> when I started my business, I started at Sam's Club. <laughs> The first Sam's Wholesale Club opened in Oklahoma City in 1983. Sam's Club was created by Sam Walton, the remarkable retailer who brought the nation Walmart stores. Sam's Club debuted in 1983 as something of a corollary to the Walmart small town strategy. The warehouse stores were designed for an urban market, giving Walmart stores, Inc., access to customers it did not otherwise reach. The Warehouse Club idea did not originate with Sam Walton. The designated father of the Warehouse Club industry was the aptly named Saul Price, who ran Price Club. Saul Price opened his first Price Club in San Diego in 1976. The chain spread across the West Coast in the 1980s. Price Club stores were huge, on average 108,000 square feet, and ran with no frills and a minimum number of employees. Saul Price guided Sam Walton through one of his stores in the early 1980s. Walton acknowledged that his Sam's clubs were patterned after the Price chain. The first Sam's opened in Oklahoma City in 1983. It was called Sam's Wholesale Club, the name that stuck with the chain until 1990. By the end of 1983, there were two more stores, one in Kansas City, Missouri, and one in Dallas. Sales the first year were already $40 million. In 1984, the chain added eight more stores, and these 11 stores brought in $225 million total that year. Sam's Club was located in lease warehouses, usually in rather desolate areas. They were huge and bare of decorations. Goods were displayed on shipping pallets or on steel shelves, which reached almost to the ceiling. Displayed might be putting it too strongly, as the items were often simply set out stacked inside torn open packing boxes, but the goods were brand name, at prices much lower than elsewhere. Customers usually had to buy large sizes or multiple packs of things. Sam's Club took advantage of the distribution know-how of the Walmart chain. The chain already knew how to hold down costs, and it amplified this skill at Sam's Club's. Merchandise was moved mechanically whenever possible so that few human hands needed to touch it on its journey from the factory to customers' cars. In addition, Walmart had studied the market carefully before plunging into the warehouse business. The urban market of the warehouse store was a great complement to the small town market of the Walmart chain. The two chains added to each other without competing. Between its founding in 1983 and 1985, Sam's Club opened in urban markets in the South and the Southwest. The chain entered the Midwest in 1986. By 1987, Sam's had 84 stores. This included stores it bought in 1987 when it took over the warehouse chain Super Saver Wholesale. Super Saver had gone head to head with Sam in 10 Southern cities and had another 11 warehouse stores in the South but it was not profitable, and in 1987, Sam's took over the chain, closing some stores and reopening others under the Sam's banner. In 1989, Sam's began moving into the Northeast. In 1990, Sam's changed its name from Sam's Wholesale Clubs to simply Sam's Clubs. So it adopted the simpler Sam's Club name overall. While the chain was taken wholesale out of its name, it coincidentally bought a rival chain called the Wholesale Club. Sam's paid about $175 million for the Indianapolis-based chain of 27 stores. One advantage Sam's had was its relationship with Walmart. Though Sam's had originally been 
designated for urban markets where Walmarts opened in small towns increasingly since the late 1980s, Sam's opened alongside or nearby Walmarts. Because Sam's was for members only and appealed to small businesses, Walmarts management claimed the two stores did not overlap. Half the new Sam's opened in 1990 were paired with a Walmart. The size of the duo dwarfed other players in the same market. The biggest players were still Sam's Club, Costco, Price, and Pace Membership Warehouse, which was run by the formidable retailer Kmart. A poor retail environment in the early 1990s, combined with the intensity of the competition among the chains as they reached out of their core geographical markets, caused several stumbles. Sam's apparently looked into acquiring Price or Costco, as did Kmart. Eventually, Price and Costco merged, forming Price Costco, Inc. in 1993. Within a few years, the name was reverted to Costco Companies, Inc. Kmart was unable to keep Pace Membership Warehouse going and sold 99 of its 113 stores to Sam's in 1993. At this juncture, Sam's was the biggest chain left with about 400 stores and 1993 sales of $14.7 billion. The company decided to refocus on its core of small business customers, targeting specific industries such as nursing homes, restaurants, hotel motel operators, cleaning companies and restaurants. It stocked items such as institutional quality sheets, heavy restaurant grade cutlery, wheelchairs and wrist splints. In targeting particular businesses, Sam's also moved to carry less of other items such as housewares that appeal more to consumers buying for themselves or their families. In 1998, the company embarked on a major renovation program. It remodeled 70 stores, added bakeries or other departments to 50 more, and expanded the fresh grocery departments of 120. By 2000, the warehouse club industry had shaken down to only three major players, Sam's with over 450 stores, Costco with over 300, and BJ's Wholesale Club with just over 100 units. Rivalry between Costco and Sam's continued unabated. Sam's and Costco opened stores within the same city. Sam's increased its expansion into California, once a Costco stronghold. Sam's also began attaching gas stations to its stores, moving from a pilot of seven in 1999 to a planned 100 or more by the end of the year. Sam's also enhanced its pharmacy hours and offered other services such as one-hour photo processing and prepared meals. On September 24, 2006, Sam's Club unveiled a new logo. In December of 2007, Sam's Club launched a new slogan, Enjoy the Possibilities. Since then, it became an official advertising slogan mentioned in television and radio advertisements, but it was not mentioned on its website. Literally a month later, the Enjoy the Possibility slogan was no longer in use, but they launched a, another slogan, Savings Made Simple, the year later. Over the next 10 years, Sam's Club would close some of its underperforming stores and lay off many of its part-time employees. They would also try to continue to expand in the process. On January 11, 2018, Walmart announced that 63 Sam's Club's locations in cities including Memphis, Houston, Seattle, and others would be closing. Some of the stores had already liquidated without notifying employees. Some employees learned a company-wide email delivered January 11. 11,000 employees would be affected by this. Today, most locations have pharmacy, tire, and battery Photo, as of late 2019, photo was cut from most clubs, bakery, optical, cafe, and floral departments. Sam's Clubs market items under private labels Simply Right, Members Mark, Bakers and Chefs, Daily Chef, Sam's Club, and Richie Lou Foods. Sam's Club does not sell the Sam's Choice or Great Value brands that are available in Walmart stores. As of October 31, 2022, Sam's Club operates 600 membership warehouse clubs in the United States, in 44 states, of course, Puerto Rico, 
as well as the U.S. Virgin Islands. So what are your favorite memories of this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. Thanks for watching.